Hello everyone, today we're going to talk a bit about gain staging. It's a confusing topic for some, so I wanted to hopefully clarify it for you. Stay tuned. There are several places in the production process where you'll need to monitor and adjust levels. The most important is while you're recording. Setting levels isn't really difficult while recording. The basic, don't clip your converters on the way in. So you set a basic level. What would that be? Anything below clipping is fine, but averaging around minus 18 decibels full scale on the digital end is great, but that's hard to see. Different sounds have different level measurements. Say, for example, a kick drum is going to show up with a different average than a sustained bass note. I'll show you what I mean by that. So if we're looking at this kick drum, and I open up the mixer, and open up a level meter, and a VU, and do the same for this bass. So if we open those two meters, you'll see that they're both achieving decent levels, but the bass appears to have a much higher average, and that's because of its sustained. Uh, the kick drum is achieving the same peak, if not a higher peak overall than the bass, but its overall level looks to be lower on average. Got it? But that's not a big deal. We can change that or adjust that as necessary. The most important thing is to not clip on the way in. That's the most important thing you'll do while recording is not clip. I'm going to come back to this, but monitoring while recording has nothing to do with the gain staging. You should set your levels as appropriate for the recording of the source and then change your monitoring setup as appropriate to hear what you're recording. That's especially important in scenarios where there are already other recorded sounds. One thing I want to bring up about the recording process is things that you don't record yourself, like instruments uh, in Logic or other DAWs that are pre-recorded or modeled synths or sampled synth libraries or pianos. Those sounds are problematic because you're not setting your own levels, and the presets are often very, very, very loud. Look at that level. Now that one sound by itself would take up all the space in your mix, all by itself. Look at the average level. Now these, these meters are calibrated the same, and this one sound isn't peaking higher than the other sounds, but it's averaging much higher. So you'd want to reduce that level, and you'd want to do so on the GUI of the plugin itself. There you go. Just around, maybe a little bit higher. Yeah, perfect. But look at where the meter shows that now. It's peaking at minus nine now, while the kick drum is actually peaking significantly higher, but averaging significantly lower. Interesting, right? All right, so stage one, setting the recording level of an incoming audio signal or the adjusted level of an incoming signal from a plug-in. Uh, also, this is, this is important for some of the presets for compressors, EQs. Some of those have outgoing levels that are much higher than they should be. That's stage one. Don't clip and set basic levels that are reasonable and optimal. Why do you want to do that? Downstream processors like compressors, uh, saturation, guitar amp sims, Many of those plugins are optimized to act like their counterparts in the analog domain. And so those levels are 0 dB VU. That's why you see me using this VU meter, because that's an analog measurement of voltage, while in the box we use this digital measurement in full scale. So when I say minus 18, that's a full scale measurement below 0 decibels full scale. And that's the limit of digital audio. That's the absolute top limit. While analog, you can still go above that, without damaging the audio a bit. You can go significantly above it, actually, without causing significant distortion. But that average is where many of the processors, compressors, preamps are set to achieve high audio quality. So by the way, these meters, you can get them free. This one wasn't free, but there's plenty of places to get free meters. If you need me to help you find them, let me know and I'll look up a few. Digital plugins, by the way, like the Gain plugin or Logic Channel EQ will not clip. You cannot clip this plugin. Digital plugins won't clip as well as the internal channels, the buses and internal audio channels and instrument channels. You can't clip those channels. I'll show you what I mean by that on this pad. Let's turn this way down so what we're hearing is actually going to low, but we're actually going to watch this, this channel here. And what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the output of this EQ a lot. So look what you're seeing here. The output level there is far above zero decibels full scale, but you'll notice that it doesn't go into the red. 
Let's put a level meter here. In stereo. Look at that. So obviously that's clipping. That's clipping the main output. So if you printed that with the master set at its normal level, that audio file would clip or your converters would clip on the way out. That's not what you want. But the internal channel stays in the orange. It doesn't go red like the main output or the level meter on the main output. The reason it doesn't go red is because internally you can't clip. As long as you lower that level someplace before any actual output or before that audio is going to be printed as an audio file, that audio won't clip. You can lower it anywhere in the signal path and you won't distort the audio. You won't saturate. There is no saturation on these channels. They're completely clean. This is not an analog desk. It acts like an analog desk in some ways, but it's not an actual analog desk. All right, beyond that, downstream processing is also affected by the levels leaving each channel. All the channels together are summed into your mix. So if we send all of these channels to a mix bus and we put a processor there, all of the levels of all of those channels will affect any processor. So you have to make sure the outgoing levels for each channel also don't get too high or they will affect the processors on that new channel, on that mix bus, for example, or on a drum bus or on a vocal bus. Got it? So you want to check levels everywhere at every stage to make sure they're optimized. There's something else to do with the busing inside Logic. And that is the reason that the internal channels don't clip is because Logic and most other DAWs use 32-bit or 64-bit, depending on the DAW, floating point processing. That allows Logic to achieve more than 750 decibels above the full-scale measurement of zero. That's why you can't clip internally. That has nothing to do with the external structure of your interface or the external printing of an audio file at 24 bits or 16 bits. Now, if you save that and export it as a 32-bit float file, it won't clip either. Only the internal analog processors will clip. That's it. Those analog processors are basically meant to receive levels at around average minus 18 dB full scale or around 0 dB VU, which would be the analog version of that measurement. There's one more thing I want to talk about here. Monitoring while recording, I wanted to revisit. And what's important there is that these levels associated with these pre-recorded tracks would interfere with you hearing yourself while recording a new track. So you'd have to adjust in one of many ways. Many interfaces have their own control panels, which allow you to create headphone mixes, or you can use a mix bus and all your other pre-recorded sounds to your mix bus and turn that down and not send your incoming tracks to that same mix bus or listen through your direct monitoring your interface. The point is you need to adjust not the incoming recording level of that new sound, but the measurement of all the other tracks that are already recorded so they're not trying to compete with existing tracks because you're going to want to turn up the preamp, which you should not do. Your preamp level, your input level of your guitar or mic or whatever you're recording should be set optimally for that one individual sound, not based on the other sounds that already exist in your song. Got it? One interesting thing to note is that if you're playing back a sound, you see these low levels here? If I were to export this, minus six peak, if I were to export this file at 24 bit, it would not actually be a 24 bit file. And then interesting, it'd actually be 23 bits. Every six decibels of reduction is a loss of one bit. That's not something you should worry about, but it's interesting. Um, you can recover that data just by normalizing or increasing the gain later during mastering and recover that. The point, though, is that when you say 24-bit, you're only talking about something that's recorded or exported at zero decibels full scale. That's the only way to achieve the entirety of the 24-bit scale. Got it? Okay, one thing I forgot to mention and I wanted to bring up is a great feature in Logic that allows you to set levels pretty easily for individual tracks and regions. It's called the normalize region or cell gain function. So you can select a bunch of regions, audio regions only, not MIDI regions. And then I'm going to open this key command and I've got it set for 18 decibels loudness. And what's gonna happen is when I click okay, you'll see that some of the channels got louder, some of them got softer, actually most of them got louder. And that sets that average level, let me undo it. And you can see that my roads got a lot louder, the vocal got louder, everything got louder in this case. You can also set that for peaks, by the way. So in the case of drums, I might set a peak level because the sustains are so short. And for the sustained sounds like the roads, the vocal, and the bass, I might use loudness as a measure, like so. And then for these, use peak, and let's set them at minus six. 
Wow. Tell me. And you can see that things are a lot louder now. And then we could mix based on that as a starting point. One other cool thing I want to mention, I'm so glad I didn't forget to talk about this. Say, for example, we've set a level for a vocal or something and people are concerned about oh, setting levels with the faders. I suggest always using the faders. Why? The faders are logarithmic, unlike the gain plugin, which is suggested. But let's say you've created this uh, level with this. Tell me what you need. And now you really want to automate this fader later, but you've set it very low to, to get the level you actually want. What are you going to do about that? Well, you can just insert the gain plugin. We know that the level of this signal Tell me what you need from me. and this fader is at minus and I'll make it me. 15, right? So we can adjust this gain to minus 15 or so and then reset the fader Tell me what you need from and adjust the output of this effect button. Tell me what you need from and we've got basically the same level, right? Let's reset that to make sure I did that correctly so I don't kid myself here. Minus 15. Tell me what you yeah. need from me. All right, so we're going to set that at zero and set this at minus 15. Tell me what you need yes. from me. Yes, and we've got the level we need, but we now have access to the fader. So a logarithmic fader is different than a gain plugin because at the top of the range, a large movement here does very little. And movement here, even a small movement, does a lot. But on the gain plugin, the change in gain is consistent throughout its range. So that makes it less precise. The logarithmic fader is more precise at the top. But anyway, I just wanted to show you how to recover a fader to use just by using a gain plugin. I hope that helps. If you have more questions about gain staging, please let me know. I have no problem talking about this issue, and I hope this helps to avoid some of the confusion associated with it. I have a Patreon. I hope you'll join. The link's below, and I hope you'll subscribe to this channel.